Hey, welcome back to David Dusek Golf. So one of the most popular series of videos that I've had a chance to start up now on my channel is taking a look at back at the clubs then and now of the most famous stars in golf. We took a look at Tiger Woods. We've taken a look at Roy McIlroy. This week, I'm going to focus on John Rahm, who's been an enormous star for nearly a decade now on the PGA Tour. And I bet I've got some photographs and I've got some facts that you have never seen, stuff that you didn't know about the equipment Rahm has been using since he turned pro back in 2016. So Come on, let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look. Very first photograph. This is John Rahm as a 21-year-old amateur. He is playing at Arizona State University. This is the Waste Management Phoenix Open. And your eyes are not deceiving you. That is a Titleist 915 D3 driver. Yes, Titleist was the predominant brand in John Rahm's bag throughout much of his amateur career. And as I'm going to show you, um, you know, he has moved around a little bit from brand to brand. But when John was playing at his Arizona State, Titleist was the brand of choice for the Spaniard. That uh, 915 D3 was the slightly smaller, more maneuverable head version. Uh, there was, as many of you will remember, a 915 D2 that was also very popular. That was sort of the more point-and-shoot, higher stability club. The 915 D3 was a little bit taller. It had a deeper face. Um, it allowed for more maneuverability on shots, so not surprising that Rom would sort of go that way. I don't have images of it, but Rom was also playing a 915 F3 wood he had a 913 f um five wood but that club only had 17 degrees so that's more like a four wood and at this, this time when this picture was um shot in 2015 um he had 714 mb blades in the bag john was a blade guy at that point but if we fast forward just a little bit and we go to the 2016 u.s open at oakmont still as an amateur john rom is transitioning now into some tailor-made stuff so now we get John playing the M2 driver, which is a little bit of a departure from what he was playing with that Titleist driver. Again, that was the little bit more maneuverable of the two Titleist drivers that were the most popular at the time. M2 is all about point and shoot, higher stability, a lot of distance. The M2 is a wildly popular club, but John is still an amateur playing uh, at, at this point in the US Open. He does obviously make the cut at that US Open. Interesting to note, you can see in this image, that's an M1 rescue club. TaylorMade doesn't really call them hybrid clubs out there. They refer to it more as rescue clubs. And this is something that John had in his bag early in his career as an amateur. He did play this hybrid club uh, rather than a couple of different options that would have been around at that point, namely long irons. Um, we really don't see John Rahm as a professional using a hybrid club. This is something that he really had as an amateur. It would make sense at Oakmont where on very firm, fast greens, you would want to have a, a higher ball flight and a steeper angle of descent to be able to make the, the ball stop more quickly on greens like that. So a hybrid club, um, also with a very thick, nasty rough that you're going to get at Oakmont, a hybrid club makes a lot of sense for a player like John. Now, as far as the irons goes, you can see in this image, again, still an amateur, still playing out of Arizona State, has the hat on here. That is a tailor-made Tour Preferred Muscle Back Blade, the MB. This was a very popular iron uh, back in the early and the middle 2010s. Rom has this in the bag um, playing there. But I want you to sort of take note of the fact that he is playing that MB iron because the MBs, uh, their days are numbered in John Rahm's bag already at this point. He's going to make some pretty substantive changes that I'm going to reveal to you um, as we sort of go forward here relatively soon. But in 2016 at Oakmont, he is still playing that. Fast forward one week after the U.S. Open at Oakmont, and we get this image right here, and you'll notice right away there is a big tailor-made logo on John Rahm's hat. He has now turned professional after that U.S. Open. Um, he is now signed tailor-made player at Quicken's Loans National, uh, his first official event as a professional golfer. So he is now making money for endorsing clubs and gets to keep the paycheck, which is great. You'll notice the M2 driver is still in the bag. As for the putter that John Rahm was using that week when he turned professional, that was, again, a congressional country club outside of Bethesda, Maryland. That is a very interesting Odyssey putter. So he is still holding on to, this is an Odyssey two-ball fang putter. Um, so the two-ball fang was quite quite a handful obviously the two ball design is iconic there have been two ball putters now for you know a couple of decades rom has you can see has a line through the two balls there to help him align that so he not only gets the two white discs and puts that behind the golf ball to sort of create three which is helps you with your alignment but he gets the benefit of that line 
The fang portion of it was to create more perimeter weighting. That adds more stability. It increases the MOI. And that was a really popular model at the time, again, in the late 2000s and then through the mid-2010s. Uh, Keegan Bradley also used and was among the other top players using sort of a fang style. And at the time, he was able to affix that. He used a belly putter version of that fang putter. If we transition now, um, you can see this is taken at the Travelers Championship, which was a little bit later in the season than it is now. This was an August tournament um, outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And he still has the TaylorMade Tour Preferred MB Blades in the bag. But again, as I said, those days are numbered because we fast forward now to November. Now, as you can see, when we take a look at this picture right here. Uh, again, those Tour Preferred um, Muscle Back Blades, the Tour Preferred MBs from TaylorMade are still in the bag for ROM. Uh, something interesting to sort of note and to sort of take a look at. You can see the, the shaft that he's been playing in all of his irons. That is a Project X 6.5 shaft, and that shaft isn't going anywhere in any of these images that I'm going to be showing you. John has a real propensity for sticking with the shafts, not just in his irons, but also in his woods, as I'll sort of be pointing out as well. Um, those 6.5 uh, Project X shafts are going to be everywhere. Then I saw John and had a chance to take a couple of these photographs, which are some interesting close-up stuff. This was at the Shriners Hospital for Children Open 2016 in Las Vegas. So now we're in November in Las Vegas. And a couple of things that really sort of caught my eye. Um, right off the bat, you can see that there is a really cool um, graphic presentation that's been put onto his mill grind wedge. So you've got the pitchfork. Obviously showing some of his Sun Devil Pride along with that. But the interesting thing to, to me, or I should say the most interesting thing, is the addition of an RSI 4-iron. So John is really an early proponent, a really ad early adopter, I should say, to what has become the modern golf bag out on the PGA Tour, the DP World Tour, now for John, the Live Tour, where very few players run 3-iron, say, or even 4-iron, through pitching wedge in exactly the same iron these days. Most players, even at the most elite levels, are going with something that's going to help them get the ball up in the air more easily um, in the long irons and something that's going to be much more precision oriented through the middle and the scoring clubs. So John putting in this forearm, you can see it has a speed pocket slot in the sole. That's going to help for to improve performance when you strike the ball a little bit thin. It's going to create a slightly higher launch angle. Um, which in turn again creates a little bit steeper angle of descent. So John taking a look at the forearm and deciding to go with something that's going to be a little bit more helpful is interesting to me. You know, I think a lot of people think and just assume that the most elite ball strikers out there are going to be using blades through the whole way. And as I'm about to show you, uh, that is not the case with John Rahm. A couple months later at the 2017 Farmers Insurance Open, this is at Torrey Pines, of course, and John Rahm ends up winning this tournament. You can see that we've made a putter change. We're now into the tailor-made uh, Spider Red. This is a putter that became extremely popular around this time because, as you might recall, Jason Day had the best statistical puttering season that any player had ever had using this putter. That tailor-made Spider Tour, a Spider Mini, there were different iterations of it. Some had lines, some didn't have lines, some had dots. Um, many different players go into this putter. Rory McIlroy, Dustin Johnson, obviously Jason Day sticks with it successfully. John Rahm wins after putting Spider in the bag um, early in 2017. I then had a chance to see John play at the Players' Championship and got some of these images and noticed now that we've made some pretty significant changes in equipment for ROM. So as we take a look at this photo right here, the blades are gone. The um, Tour Preferred MBs are history. At this point now, John has transitioned into the P750s. And this is something that TaylorMade had had the Tour Preferred stuff out for a while. And now we start going into what we still have today, which is the P series irons, P standing for the player stuff. The smaller the number in the TaylorMade P series, the smaller the blade length, the more compact the overall club is going to be. So Rom going with P750, this was the smallest, better player cavity back iron that TaylorMade had at the time. There was a P730, which was just a touch smaller. That was a muscle back blade that that club and in versions of it go into the bag for Dustin Johnson and Roy McIlroy, Tommy Fleetwood. Um, eventually sort of gets into that stuff. But ROM is transitioned now fully into better player cavity back clubs. And, and these are going to stick around for quite a while. What's also interesting, though, is you can see that we have a Tour Preferred UDI 3-iron in the bag that week at um, TPC Sawgrass. Now, the Tour Preferred UDI, UDI in this case stands for the Ultimate Driving Iron. So this is a true driving iron, again, with a speed pocket slot that has been put in there 
for better performance on low struck shots. It's something that's designed to be optimal off the tee. Um, but ROM still in the bag how has that RSI uh, four iron. He also has a P750 four iron. So this brings up something that's kind of interesting. When players are playing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at PGA Tour events in practice rounds, in the different pro-ams that they're going to compete in, very oftentimes they're carrying more than 14 clubs. Now, in competition, you're only allowed to have 14 clubs. But in these other events, they are going out and scouting the golf course with their caddy. And they will very often have 15, 16 clubs in the bag trying to decide what combination is going to be right for the way the course conditions are, the way the weather is going to be, how uh, the anticipated pin locations are going to be, the hole locations. So they may be carrying many more clubs than just the 14 that they're going to end up with in competition. And there is a high likelihood in some cases where players may realize, hey, look, I don't have a four iron on this golf course, or I don't need to carry this club. I need to carry that club because the prevailing wind is such, or I'm looking for a certain ball flight, or the rough is down so I can carry a longer iron, which I kind of like for control, or the rough is up so the, the long iron comes out and a higher lofted fairway wood, or maybe a hybrid goes in. So Rom is playing around with different combinations because on the day when I shot this, he had 15 clubs in the bag, two four irons. They're gonna perform differently. Um, the four iron with the RSI, uh, four iron with the, which is an RSI UDI four iron, that is going to be fitted with a graphite shaft that's also gonna probably be maybe a quarter inch longer, I would have suspected. I didn't have the stats on that one. It's gonna give him a little more distance, a little more height. Maybe he wanted it, maybe he didn't, but it's very common to see players um, have more than 14 clubs in practice rounds and to have two four irons or two three irons or something like that it happens much more. Rom still using the spider putter. Uh, this, this shot was taken in 2017 at TPC Boston later in the season. He's sticking with that. And as we transition now into 2018, Rom has put in the new driver. This is a tailor-made M4 driver. So Rom, instead of going with M3, which had some sliding weights for maneuverability, is choosing to go with a driver that is very much now, again, like the M2 that he had been in before. This is the point-and-shoot bomber. Higher MOI, higher stability. Um, but for him, it really, I think, let him unleash it. Rom, as you're going to see with the rest of the drivers that I'm going to show you, is much more into neutral um, weighting. I think that he looks for higher stability, uh, but you'll notice that that shaft that he is using, that green Aldola shaft, that shaft, again, is going to be sticking around and has at this point already been around for, for quite some time. Specifically, that shaft is an Aldola Tour Green 75TX, and John plays his drivers at uh, 45 and a quarter uh, inches, which is basically going to be measured from the top of the grip down to the sole of the golf club. There's a whole lot of different ways to, to measure golf clubs, and I won't even get into that. That's a subject for another video. But what's interesting is, much as John is going with sort of the point and shoot high MOI driver, at this point, he, as you can see in this photograph, he has got a tailor-made M3 fairway wood. And the M3 did have the sliding weight um, in it. It had a lower center of gravity. It had a more forward center of gravity to create a little bit more piercing ball flight. There was an M4 fairway wood, but John went with M4 in the driver, M3 in the fairway wood. As you can sort of see, though, in the where the weight is positioned, it's again, it's in the middle. That allows a player like John, uh, more accomplished players, to work the ball from right to left, left to right. It really isn't setting up for a draw or a fade bias. Rom usually plays a fade. His swing and his hands will create that ball flight he's looking for. I really don't think that he wants the club to favor um, innately having one type of a shot shape over another. Taking a look then a little bit later in the season, I thought this was kind of interesting because while the irons and the wedges for the most part really haven't changed, there is a difference in the lob wedge that John is carrying. As you can see here, John has a copper-toned, tailor-made high toe. That's a mill grind high toe lob wedge. And judging by the wear pattern on the bottom of that, I think that he's playing it primarily as um, a chipping short game club, potentially also in the bunkers, but also from a square position. Well, how do I know that? The wear pattern on the sole, the bounce, is relatively even. If you're using it much more in, as an open-faced club, there should have been a lot more wear going down into the heel section, and it sort of streaks out towards the toe. But it's a very, very ovular, sort of a, a C shape, which leads me to believe that this is a club that he played primarily uh, either in bunkers or in rough, in sand, etc., et um, in a square position. But that higher toe allows for more 
space where you can make contact high in the face. During this time period, 2019, 2020, a lot of tailor made guys did put in high toe wedges. I know that Rory McIlroy put three of them in at the US Open in 2019 at, um, at Pebble Beach. So just something to notice that John is willing to tinker around with that a little bit. Now, next photograph here, we get 2019 and John has transitioned into the M5 driver, which is again, a little bit peculiar because we've gone from M2 and M4, which were higher stability, really no adjustability in terms of moving the, the, the head around unless you use some hot melt or some glue. But he has gone into the adjustable version uh, of the TaylorMade drivers. They had M5 and they had M6. He's using the M5. It is worth noting, however, where John positioned the weights in this M5 driver, because as we take a look, both weights are on the middle track, which basically means that he, again, is not creating either a draw or a fade bias with his driver. He has one weight forward and one weight back, but they're all aligned up. And so that creates still the, the neutral weight balance. It is going to increase the MOI slightly. Um, but it is also going to increase ball speed because as you put more of the weight forward in a driver, it tends to reduce spin, increase ball speed, and also reduce the launch angle as well. So Rom had the ability to create a draw or fade bias, but opted not to do it when he is in the M5 driver in 2019. 2020, and Rom transitioned into Sim. Now Sim, as you can sort of see, had a slightly more aerodynamic shape. That was the, the big thing with it. It still has a carbon fiber crown, the adjustable hosel mechanism. There is a sliding weight in Rom's driver. And if anything, judging by this photograph, it looks like it's a little bit to the toe side, which would make sense. If it's not gonna be neutrally biased in terms of John Rom's driver, he again plays a cut off the tee the vast majority of the time. His ball flight is basically going from left to right. Not uncommon for some of the biggest hitters. So. To have that sliding weight be maybe just a touch off towards the toe doesn't really surprise me. Again, that Aldo Green shaft is still there. He's still playing um, the Golf Pride MCC grips. That has not changed. Lots of things about John's components do not change. Even though he may change drivers, the shaft is, is, is basically going nowhere. One thing that is changed, though, a little bit towards the middle and then the end part of the season, this shot was taken during the 2020 Masters when, unfortunately, there were no patrons uh, at Augusta National. John has switched from a red spider putter to this white one. Um, it is very interesting to, to sort of go. It's a higher contrast white. It's something that we've seen several different tailor-made players over the years tinker around with this. Rory has played with different colors and really had the most success with the copper toned. Um, but there was a period where they had what's called hydroblast, which was this sort of very soft white. And John went into that putter uh, in 2020, obviously played numerically fewer turns because of the pandemic and because of the scheduling, but the white putter goes in right before the big move that John makes when he debuts in 2021, when John Rahm switches from TaylorMade and goes to Callaway. And that was a pretty big coup because John had had a lot of success, had already vaulted himself as basically it was a fixture now at this point in the top 10, switches manufacturers, and John goes into a new driver starting in 2021. And he's playing the Epic Speed as a triple diamond version. John's driver was, um, stated loft was 10 and a half degrees. If you actually measured it, it was 10.2 degrees of loft. He's also playing some, some tour only stuff at this point. So he had a triple diamond T version in his three wood. It had 14.2 degrees of loft. I have lots of notes on all this stuff. He also had a, five wood in the bag that was a triple diamond T as well that was at about 18 degrees of loft. Uh, when he went into his irons, as I'm going to show you, he played some, some very interesting stuff there as well. But John transitioning is a big take with that epic speed triple diamond, the low spin version. He had two movable weights so he could really throw more weight forward to reduce spin, reduce launch angle, increase ball speed if he wanted to. And trust me, John, John wanted to. Then looking at this image, this was one of the first odyssey putters that john goes back to if you remember way back when he was starting out that john was in that odyssey two ball fang well now he is into in 2021 at the start of the season he has an odyssey two ball 10 which from a shaping standpoint is very very similar to the spider putters that he had been using when he was with tailor so you've got a couple of back weights 
Um, again, you have that same double bend shaft that, that John had liked. Uh, it's got obviously a different face insert at this point, but from a looks standpoint, it is going to be very, very similar. And then we transition into the irons, and this is the 2021 US Open at Torrey Pines. John ends up winning this US Open. It's his first major championship. The irons that John has in his bag, the Callaway Apex TCBs, were never intended to be released in the United States. This was going to be a European tour uh, better player iron only. It was not intended to be something that came to the U.S., it did eventually come to the U.S. market and to the North American market because so many Cali players really like this, and John being sort of the biggest name of it. So TCB stands for Tour Cavity Back. So again, John sticking with the Cavity Back irons. The plate in the back is something that's swappable so that players and fitters can adjust the swing weight of the irons. Um, different weights can be put in there to, to create different swings. But again, we're going with perimeter weighting here, short blade length, a little bit of uh, forgiveness because of that perimeter weighting. But again, very, very compact blade length, something that's designed for more accomplished golfers. That two ball 10 putter at the US Open at Torrey Pines is gone. Um, that, that putter is history. And you get this putter right here, which is really interesting. So this is an Odyssey White Hot OG Rossi S. Um, it, John's putter is longer than most people realize. It's 37 inches. John's a big guy. He would make, in football, he would be an outstanding outside linebacker, I think. Possibly a safety. I'm not sure if he's quick enough for a safety, but I digress. 37 inches long. It's got two and a half degrees of loft with a lie angle of about 68 degrees. Now, what's interesting about this putter also is that this putter and iterations of it have been available at retail, but not with that face insert that you can see right there. That is a micro hinge star insert, um, inserted at basically into a white hot sort of backing, if you will. So the white part that you see is the white hot insert, but it was never made available to the public with this specific hinged insert. Um, the micro hinge star was firmer. It was a little bit clickier than many of the other Odyssey um, hinged micro hinge inserts. So it created the sound and feel and rollout combination that John wanted. And when John Rahm asks Odyssey to make him a prototype putter, trust me that he gets the prototype putter. Um, you can see he's also in this point playing the Callaway Chrome Soft X ball and John plays tens, which I think is interesting. Um, one last thing about that putter that you can sort of see here, his putter is really heavy. Um, John's putter finished, according to my friend Johnny Wonder and some of the notes that he has published, 544 grams finished. This thing is a redwood. Many putters that you're going to see, the heads are running around, say, 325 to 350 grams. They're on 340 grams. is a really popular head weight. And that's gotten heavier and heavier over time. But a finished overall club weight of 544 at 37 inches, this thing is a big putter. Obviously, John loves it, adores it, hits some big putts with it. Um, not a putter you're going to be, not a putter, however, you will be able to find at retail. Moving on now to the next photograph, I had a chance to take this and when I went through the bag um, for John Rahm at the 2022 PGA Championship, uh, Southern Hills in Oklahoma, he is now into Rogue ST, and this is a triple diamond LS version of the Rogue ST. Tons of carbon fiber in the sole, lots of carbon fiber uh, on the crown, adjustable hosel mechanism. Um, like all triple diamond stuff, this is the low spin version. Um, again, no movable weights at this point within this driver. Cali does have uh, drivers that do have movable weights. John is skewing that. That weight that you do see between the two jailbreak bars, that is to adjust swing weight. Um, that is not something that's swappable from really from a performance standpoint. What I thought was interesting is that John also had this three wood in the bag. This is a triple diamond T, Rogue ST three wood. And it's an HL version, HL meaning high launch. But this club was, again, never made available to the public. The Triple Diamond T was a tour-only version. Um, it's essentially a very small head, very maneuverable. There is a large tungsten weight, or a large weight bar that's screwed in. That sort of coppery gold tone affixes the internal weight there. It's meant to drive the center of gravity down and forward to increase ball speed, to lower the launch angle. Again, all things that elite players are really looking for. Really good players, high club head speed players like John, do not have trouble getting the three wood up in the air. So going, it's interesting, going with a 16 degree HL model and having that much weight forward, I am sure he was looking for a very specific ball flight, a specific number, 
both off the tee and from the fairway. Players at the elite level are using their three wood as an alternative to their driver. There aren't very many par fives that John Rahm needs three wood in order to reach in two. So this is primarily a driver alternative when driver for John, who puts it out there probably 305 to 310 on the fly and can easily carry the ball farther. If driver is going to bring too much trouble into play, this club will be what he reaches for. So again, very interesting that it was never made available to the public. This again is a little bit better look at the Callaway um, Apex TCBs. Again, tour uh, cavity back. You can sort of see that swing weight in there that, that he's playing. At the same tournament, John has transitioned into the Jaws forged wedges. Now, again, you see that there are two 56 degree wedges in the bag at Southern Hills before the start. One of them obviously comes out. One of them is an older wedge, the sort of coppery tone one that says Rombo and has the green lettering on it. Um, John has, for a while, had his kids' names and initials, different things like that, hearts stamped onto his wedges. I'm suspecting, although I don't have this 100% fact check, that the green and yellow version was the club, the, the 56 degree wedge that he would have had in the bag at the Masters, hence the green and yellow coloring. Um, a month later, he is showing up at the PGA Championship. He has probably practiced and used that club enough to where the grooves and the sharpness of the grooves have deteriorated. And he's going to want to have something in the bag at Southern Hills to make sure that he's got all the spin and control he can get. So. Players, very often, the sand wedge will come out for elite players because they play and practice so much every four to six weeks. Uh, it depends on exactly how much they're practicing at home in between tournaments. But bringing both, he can decide when he's at the golf course which one is going to stick in the bag, which one am I going to stick with, and which one am I maybe going to bench. But, but a lot of thought goes into that. This is a little bit better look, once again, at that Rossi putter. You can see the micro hinge insert. The back, interesting, no alignment lines, no alignment dots, much more of a feel type oriented uh, thing here with this putter. Um, that's been sticking around in the bag. But again, this one's days are numbered too. If you take a look at this next photograph, this is 2023 Kapalua and John Rahm is into the Paradigm. Paradigm has a huge start to the season for John and for Callaway, he is playing the lower spin, the triple diamond version of Paradigm. Again, take a look, that graphite shaft from Aldola, the Aldola Green, it's still there. He has not changed that graphite shaft in years and years, and I don't anticipate that he probably will. If John wants a bunch of those, Aldola will be more than happy, even though it's probably out of their line. I know you can still get them. They're more than happy to have John use whatever shaft he wants, still playing that one. What ends up happening, I think, most interestingly, is in the run-up to the Ryder Cup, and then in the Ryder Cup itself, John makes a putter change. Now, making equipment changes right before the Ryder Cup is kind of a massive decision. It shows a lot of faith that he has. He's going into an AI version um, of the putter that he had already had in play. At this point, though, this putter from Odyssey is not made available to the public. This putter becomes available November 2023, but John is playing with it uh, at the Ryder Cup before, but starting basically about two and a half months before the putter is released. It is the same putter from a shaping standpoint, and it's an Odyssey Rossi, but it has a different insert. That AI insert is basically a, an insert that has been designed using artificial intelligence. So there are windows that you can look through the, the, the bottom of John's putter and see that, that the, the white hot insert has different sort of uh, thicknesses to it, if you will. It's a variable thickness insert in a putter. We think of usually variable thickness in drivers and such like that. The idea that Odyssey is bringing here is that it's going to help to normalize ball speed and help to improve your distance control. And so John is one of the first guys out there to use this putter, used it very successfully. Now we transitioned into, with this photograph, 2024. So that is this year. The shaft, the grip, they're all the same, but we're now into the Paradigm AI Smoke. And this is the triple diamond low spin version. We know that because there's a weight in the front and in the back. So that indicates that uh, those movable weights, that's an indication of triple diamond for low spin. Again, not surprising. John has been in the low spin stuff from Callaway really now ever since he joined them. Uh, so no surprise that he is in there. We don't have a lot of images and haven't had a real chance to go deep into his bag since he joined Live Golf. But I would suspect that we're not going to see really big substantive changes from John. I would suspect he's going to keep that 
that AI one Rossi putter that he has been playing with now for about six or seven months. Um, I would suspect that we're gonna still see the Apex TCB irons in there. Maybe we see a, a little bit of a different fairway wood or something like that, but the drivers for John is probably gonna be the easiest club in the bag to transition into because so many of the things that he has about his driver, they stay the same. The grip, the shaft, everything's the same. If they give him a head that's balanced right and it's gonna give him a couple more yards of distance or a little more forgiveness, great, thanks, I'll take it. So that's a look at John Rahm's golf equipment through the years, the then and now, if you will. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's a player that you want me to focus on, drop his name down in the comment area below, or her name possibly as well. I'd love to do some LPGA stuff. It was really interesting to take a look back at John Rahm's things. If you've got any questions, if you've got any comments, be sure to drop them in the comment area below. I love to answer questions and try and help people get a little more clarification, a little bit better idea about what some of the stars are using out there on the PGA Tour, and in this case now with John, as well in the Live Tour. It would also be really helpful if you would like this video as well as subscribe to my channel. So I will look forward to seeing you again real soon.